I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And you may say, Dr. Bill, this this looks different. This looks strange. I'm not used to this, and I'm not used to you wearing headphones. Well, there's a reason for that. We're going with a two-camera shoot for the very first time using VidBlaster software. Now, VidBlaster is a very amazing software package that allows me to actually choose different cameras. <laughs> They're both webcams. Isn't that awesome? Now, the camera that I'm on right now is the Logitech C910 camera. And the one that I'm transitioning to over here, which actually, if you'll notice, looks very sharp and clear and amazing, is the HD Microsoft Life Cam. Oh my, it started raining rather hard. Don't know if you can hear that, but it's really coming down out there. It's amazing. Anyway, the lighting may be a little weird because I'm, I'm having to light both sides of my brain at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Anyway, the point is we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. So, this is going to be interesting because I've got so much going on, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to keep up with it all. But I have my tablet here, which is rather comforting to still have my tablet. Did I mention we were proud members of the Tech Podcast Network? Yes, I did. Good. Keep me straight. I know, you, you think that's too much to ask. It really is. Okay, let's go direct, directly, directly. By the way, isn't this amazing audio? This is... <laughs> I can't remember the brand. Hold on. Yes. <laughs> it is the CAD, C-A-D, CAD audio <laughs> headset. Let me, this will make a noise, but there you go. I want to make sure that was right. The CAD audio headset, uh, which I talked about many, 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 many episodes back. It's awesome. And I use it to do my radio show, which you may not even know that I do a radio show, but I do. The official FM DJ voice of Dr. Bill doing the radio show. At any rate, <laughs> so, but it's a USB headset. So I'm using that, so that's why the audio sounds so awesome. Those of you who are listening to the audio-only version of the netcast, you're probably going, Dude, what happened? He sounds so clear and amazing. I just don't understand. Well, now you know that it's this. But it's also the VidBlaster software. That's what I want to talk about. See up in the corner up there where it says VidBlaster Trial? Didn't mean to hit my microphone. It's a VidBlaster trial because I haven't paid for the software yet. Sorry, VidBlaster, but it's like you are designing the thing to do. I'm trialing it, testing it. Yes. <laughs> and once I'm fully committed to the software, which is looking very good, by the way, then I will look at actually buying it. Of course, that means that I need some cash. <laughs> so if you'd like to contribute to the VidBlaster software purchase for the doctor, you can go on our website. You think I'm joking, but I'm not. Go on our website, and up in the upper, near the top of the website, there's a little bar there of clicking places, <laughs> links, and you can click one of them that says, Money! with an exclamation point. And what that's about is that you can contribute to the Dr. Bill show for just such things as this software that I'm talking about, the VidBlaster software. Dude, 
<laughs> I would greatly appreciate it. Because it, it gets expensive buying all these cameras and things and equipment. And, you know, there's just only so much that my wife will agree to because I go crazy. It's not her fault. I'm the little kid that buys all the toys. I know she's saying, when do I get to buy toys? I'm all for it. Don't get me wrong. It's just that she's the one with the brains. And she knows that the money is not infinite. <laughs> ah, if only it were. I'd be using a TriCaster and mega cameras and... <laughs> but I do the best with what I can. Okay, let's go to the blog. That's where I was headed. The blog, of course, being drbill.tv, dot TV, Dr. Bill dot TV, the blog, the computer curmudgeon, is the subtitle. You didn't know we had a subtitle, do you? Dr. Bill dot TV, the computer curmudgeon. Yes. Okay. In the blog, first item we have is code weavers. Now, you've heard me talk about code weavers before. Code weavers are, is, is the organization, the company, that helps develop wine. W-I-N-E. Wine is not an emulator. It's one of those recursive acronyms that Linux folk are so famous for. Yes. So, wine is not an emulator, and Code Weavers writes the code primarily it's an open source project so they get help from lots of folks but code weavers has a commercial version and the commercial version that i got of code weavers specifically supports esword as in e dot e dash sword.net i'll get it right e dash sword.net which is windows software that has the bible where it's searchable and has all kinds of other cool things about it. But I run a Linux box. That's my primary system that I use, right? So I needed to be able to run eSword on Linux. And it's a Windows program. So that's what Wine allows you to do. Now, Code Weavers, this is the article. I'm digressing so much just to be able to get to this point. Code Weavers announces a new Wine based web browser. I misspelled browser. Urgh, I hate it when I do that. But I will fix it. <sighs> Sigh. A web browser with ActiveX support. In the recent quarterly Code Weavers customer newsletter, of which, of course, I am a customer, uh, they announced work has begun on a new Wine-based ActiveX supporting web browser. In addition, we're working on creating a new Wine-enabled web browser that will be able to take the place of Internet Explorer. By making Wine support with ActiveX controls uh, with a, in this new browser, users will be able to navigate to pages that were previously only accessible using IE. This browser is currently in the early alpha, not beta, alpha development stages. Translation, it's really ugly right at the moment but it's available for limited customer testing for those with a masochistic bent. Hard to say, but that's the way it works. Now, don't you like that transition between the two cameras? That's just so awesome. Anyway, next item, Michu Kaku explains why Moore's Law will be broken. Now, Moore's Law, of course, is the law that says that Moore came up with, that's why it's called Moore's Law. <laughs> anyway, he said that every two years, computing power would double. And it's actually been on track doing that ever since he said this many, many, many years ago. Well, of course, at some point, just by the laws of physics, you get to the point that you just can't keep doing that. And that's what Michukaku is talking about here. What's beyond silicon? There have been a number of proposals. Protein computers, DNA computers, optical computers, quantum computers, molecular computers. Dr. Michio Kaku says, if I were to put money on the table, I would say the next 10 years, Moore's Law slows down. We will tweak it. Yes. So the, the quest is on to be able to keep Moore's Law going, even though it's getting 
much harder to keep going smaller and more nano-ish with stuff. Anyway, next item. Discovery Channel buys Revision 3. Dude! Now, you know that I watch Techzilla. Techzilla, of course, being the show that Patrick Norton and Robert Heron and Veronica Belmont host on the Revision 3 network. And Revision 3 is kind of an outgrowth of Tech TV, which was originally ZD TV, which I have watched through all its incarnations. When it was a cable channel, and even when uh, Paul Allen from Microsoft owned it there for a while, and then he sold it, which was a bummer, but he sold it to... Uh, that gaming network. I don't know. I don't watch it. Anyway, ram it into the ground. The point is, all the former tech dudes that worked at Revision 3 left, uh, worked not at Revision 3, that worked at Tech TV left and went to Revision 3 and started that company. And it has been doing extremely well, offering these kind of IPTV type videos across the interwebs and they have like a hundred million viewers per month think about that 100 million viewers dude that's like a lot more than watch this show <laughs> i can tell you but hey you know you do the best you can anyway the point is they got bought out by the discovery channel wow now, the Discovery Channel, of course, is famous for many shows, like Dirty Jobs with Micro, and The Mythbusters. The Mythbusters is one of my favorite shows on the Discovery Channel. I can see a crossover between The Mythbusters and uh, Techzilla, for instance. Have Jamie uh, and uh, Adam come on and demonstrate blowing stuff up while Patrick Norton uses a sledgehammer and breaks something. Dude. <laughs> All right, next item. Teens and online video. We, we, are, we have a generation before us that is going to be, and already is, very tech savvy. But the kids, the little kids, as they get older, this kind of show right here is the kind of thing they're going to be doing like, well, duh, of course we do that. You know, I mean, I have to t <laughs> I have to strain with the technology and make everything work just right. They're going to be going, eh, we do that all the time. You know what I mean? So the next generation will be an online video savvy bunch. A whole generation of YouTubers. Dude. Makes you wonder how many cute cat videos will be added to the interwebs. And we all need cute cat videos. Matter of fact, I have here on the old tablet a cute cat picture. See the cute cat picture? Little bitty kitties in cups. Yes! <laughs> we need more of those on the interwebs. Of course we do. <laughs> so anyway, I think it's going to be awesome. I'm going to transition back over to this camera. The only thing is I have to do it myself. If I had, you know, like a person who did this for me, I wouldn't have to plan so much in advance. It taxes my brain. And you know that's a problem. Okay. This weekend, as I record this, is an awesome weekend. As I wrote this, this was written yesterday as I record this, which was May 4th. Remember that. And I say here in the article, today is Star Wars Day. I'm not kidding about this. This is really on the internet. It is May the 4th. Be with you. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Only geeks come up with these things. You know what I'm saying? But I love it. Okay. Plus, the Avengers started on Friday, which was yesterday, with their new movie, which, by the way, I hear is beyond 
amazingly awesome. I'm going to go see it tomorrow, so don't tell me about it right now, okay? Spoilers. Don't do that. But tomorrow, dude, I am totally going to see the movie, and it will be awesome. Me and the Game Master are jazzed. Yes. As is my wife, Belinda, by the way. We're all geeks. Okay, but there's even more aws awesomeness, awesomeness to this weekend. Today, as I record this, is a Saturday. It is Free Comic Book Saturday. Dude, free comic books for all if you go to your local comic book store. So do that before the day's over. Also, um, it is Supermoon Saturday. You say Supermoon, is that a new superhero? No, no. It means the moon is closer to the Earth than it has been in a very long time. My eye itches again. Occupational hazard, I guess. Anyway, the point is, the moon will be closer, and you know right at sunset how when the moon comes up and you see it, it looks really big. Well, today, it will look really, really, really big, and it's enough to affect the tides and make them one inch higher. So if your house is only an inch high, it might be flooded out down at the beach. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't take me seriously. Most of the time. Anyway. Whoa! <laughs> Geek Software of the Week. Drumroll is telling us it's time for Geek Software of the Week in this week's Geek Software of the Week. As I go to the next camera. <laughs> is all about a great piece of software written by the folks who have given us LastPass. Okay? Actually, I think they may have bought the company that created this originally, but it's now their product, so they're going to tweak it and make it even better, I'm sure. But LastPass is awesome, awesome. And it's awesome because I use it all the time. It, it keeps all of my passwords secret and synchronized and available and managed, and I love it. So the same company has written this Geek Software of the Week, which is X Marks, like in X Marks the Spot, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, X marks, yes. And uh, what it does, you're going, what does it do? What it does is it keeps your bookmarks straight across all your web browsers. If you're like me, I use different web browsers. I may use, when I absolutely have to, I use Internet Explorer because I've got to have ActiveX or something, you know, like I was talking about earlier, how uh, Code Weavers is going to have a Linux E wine-based ActiveX browser for that very reason. Well, sometimes you got to have Internet Explorer for that, okay? Then there's Mozilla Firefox, which I use on Linux, because on Linux it seems to be nice and fast and, and, and very compatible and is awesome. But then on Windows, I like Google Chrome, because it's extremely super fast on Windows. So I'm using all these different browsers. Well, it, wouldn't it be nice to have all your bookmarks, every single bookmark that you use on all your browsers synchronized? Now see, browsers like uh, Mozilla and uh, Chrome, yes, <laughs> synchronize across different computers with the same browser, but they don't synchronize Firefox and Chrome. Well, that's what this does. X marks. So X marks uh, is written again and put out by LastPass, but it has features like this: sync and backup. You install X marks on each computer you use, and it seamlessly integrates with your web browser and keeps your bookmarks safely backed up, backed up, and in sync. It will sync across other browsers too. Today they support Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, and Safari on the Mac OS. So it's even cross-platform. Anyway, smarter short search, search. Xmarts will highlight the top sites in your search results based on how many other users have bookmarked and rated them. Simply click to learn more. Well, click if you're on their website. This is on my website. So anyway, uh, <laughs> but you can go to their website. I have a link in the show notes here. Site info built into your browser. Click on the Xmarks info icon in, at your location bar to see detailed information about the site you're on and discover, discover other great sites just like it. 
Now that's only available in Firefox, but dude, that's awesome. I'm telling you. So you need to take advantage of that. Now, another item here. This is a security item. Put on your security hat. <laughs> you say, I don't have a security hat. Well, go get one. <laughs> I have a red hat hat back here. Yes. Actually, I'd like to have a real red hat fedora hat. So if you know where I can find one, let me know, because I'd like to have one. I would put it upon my head, even when doing the webcast here, the netcast. Yes. By the way, the other thing about VidBlaster is that I could actually do this live and stream to the interwebs. I'm not sure that's a good idea, but I could do it. That's just so awesome. Anyway, with two cameras, think about that. Anyway, I'm excited, you can tell. Flash and PHP both have really serious security problems. So Flash, if you use it in your browsers, you need to patch it. And PHP, if you run a website, such as I do, you need to patch it because it's got security problems that are really pretty serious. Know what I'm saying? So these patches have come out now to fix these security issues. Um, Adobe pushed an emergency patch Friday, as in yesterday, for its Flash player to fix a flaw that's been actively exploited to attack computers running Windows. Dude. Meanwhile, software writers are still scrambling to fix a vulnerability made public earlier this week in PHP, a scripting language which is widely used on web servers, uh, including those for Facebook. And of course, Dr. Bill's site, I use Linux as my server, Apache as my web browser, MySQL as my database, and PHP as my server-side scripting language, which is LAMP, L-A-M-P, LAMP. And that is what runs my site. So I want to be sure to get this patched, because I don't want anybody taking over my site and doing evil things. Evil is bad. Just saying. Anyway, let me switch back over here and get the book. The book. Geek Wisdom. The Sacred Teachings of Nerd Culture. Yes. And I'm going to randomly pick this for this week. Are you ready? It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Okay. Caption from the Legend of Zelda turned into a lol cat meme. Lol cat being, of course, LOL. Laugh out loud. Cat. Lol cat meme. Now here's what he says about it. Smart people are often self-sufficient and confident, particularly when it comes to our particular areas of expertise. The average geek is often the only person in the group who's capable of solving some arcane and specialized problem, which presents a whole nother problem. Even though geeky confidence and competence can sometimes lead to obnoxious and undeserved arrogance. Who, me? Yeah. The plain fact of the matter is that Frequently, when it comes to a particular topic, the geek really is the most knowledgeable person in the room. I mean, what can we say? It's true. Uh, that doesn't stop other people from trying to help, though, often with contributions that seem absurd or useless. The foolish geek rolls his or her eyes at these offers of help, but the wise geek takes them as they're meant. A sincere desire to share in the geeky joy of problem solving. And hey, you never know, that doofus might just have a point after all. <laughs> yes. And now for the fine print. Please feel free to consider this book as a this that just might possibly, possibly be helpful. Yes. <laughs> this is the that that is helpful in some cases. Indeed. Anyway, now, this has been a very different Dr. Bill show, I'm sure, because of the whole transitioning to other cameras. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Now, speaking of which, I have behind me here, still in the package, the original packaging. I'm looking over at my 
thing to make sure I'm getting it all on the screen properly. This is the Microsoft LifeCam uh, 1080p HD camera that I'm actually using right in front of me right here. I got two of them. Dude! So I got one for that camera and one for that camera, but I haven't unboxed this one yet. I've got the Logitech 910 over here. That's what I'm using for my other camera to transition to over here. So see, now, see, oh, I gotta, I gotta watch the shiny. The shiny might get in the way there. Okay, right about there. See, this is the camera right there that I'm using over there. <laughs> Not over here. But ultimately, I'll have both of these together. And when I do, when I get it all set up, which, by the way, is all based on information that I got from another tech podcast network podcaster, uh, Robbie, who does Category 5 TV. And he's from Canada, and he did a whole big demonstration of how he uses this particular camera to do his show. And uh, he uses Wirecast software rather than VidBlaster, but Wirecast is a whole lot more expensive. So, thumbs up, Robbie. I'm glad you're going for it there. But this is cheaper, and cheap is good when you are trying to save money. You know what I'm saying? So, coolness. I hope you enjoyed the show this week, but I've got a surprise for you. We have one more segment that I haven't announced officially. Are you ready? It's a Game Master segment. Me and the Game Master are going to talk The Legend of Korra, and we're going to use this system to have two people with two cameras at the same time talking to each other. How cool is that? So stay tuned for that, and we'll use that to take us out for this week. So we'll do that, and then the doctor will be out of here. Here we are with the Game Master segment that I told you about earlier in the previous incarnation of the show. <laughs> you may have noticed that while I was using the Logitech webcam, I had the image reversed. So when I held up the camera, it became very obvious. It said life cam in reverse. Smooth. Yeah, and blah. Smooth. Yes, well. This, of course, is the Game Master. Uh, I don't know if you could see my hand. It's somewhere yes. in here. Yes, I can see your hand waving frantically in front of the screen. I can do this. And I can also even put us both on the screen at the same time. Yes, in a very he's over here. Or, or here. Looking, he's, yes, I'm, I'm there, yes. Here. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, however, that taxes the CPU, so I'm going to ah, go that. back to a single shot. Okay, so what we're going to talk about here is The Legend of Korra, which I am actually rather jazzed about, but not as much as The Game Master. Yes, well, um, the... Okay, first of all... Easy for you to say. Not really, actually. I don't think I can say that again, okay. because I completely lost track of what I was saying. Not what was I saying? Right, first of all, um, <laughs> never talk. Um, the first series, Avatar Last Airbender, yes, was awesome. Awesome, yes. It feels weird to be staring at the camera and talking to you. Yes, well, you should stare at the camera because if you talk to me, they're going to go, what's he doing? I'm, I'm looking off into space is what I'm doing. Anyway. Space. Um, because it was like... I like space. Space is good. Yes. Um, yes. No, I have no idea what I was going to say now. <laughs> you were going to say that Avatar The Last Airbender was awesome, and you awesome. really were a big fan, yes. and you watched it. Um, the thing about it, though, was um, it started out... I'm just going to keep saying the word um over and over. Uh, see? started out as a kid's show. I'm looking over there again. Yes. And as the such... The camera's your friend. I don't like the camera. It's looking at me funny. Well, it has, me. A, it has a, blue, afterwards. a blue light, which, you know, that tends to make things odd when you're looking at a blue light, but it's how we keep ourselves straight when we're talking about various things like Cora, which is what we're supposed to be talking about. Rather than <laughs> we're the not actually talking about that. Because we're still dealing with the whole camera thing. Yes. Okay. So anyway, but the original series started out really, I don't know. Kiddish. Kiddish, yeah. Um, not kittenish. No. I'm, I'm looking for the right word, but it's not coming to me. Um, Juvenile. Not even really that so much. Just... Really, like the old Batman shows, really campy. Campy, silly, you know, yes. I'm there, with you. There wasn't, 
there was a storyline and it was okay, but it wasn't the main focus. The main focus was just to make people laugh. Why are you looking at me? That's distracting. I'm looking at you on the screen. I'm still distracting. See, now you're not looking at the camera again. As long as you look at the camera, I look, I'm looking into your eyes on the screen. Well, see, you're looking at the screen, and I glance over at you, and you're looking in my direction. So I'm like, oh, I should be looking at you, but I can't. Well, anyway. if I looked over here at the camera instead of looking at you, then it looks like I'm completely disinterested. But actually, I'm very interested. It's just that I'm having to run the camera at the same time that I'm talking into the camera. Yeah, because he's not editing it afterwards. That no. would make too much sense. No, that's nonlinear editing, which is awesome. And uh, the camera is not on me anyway, but it's awesome. <laughs> see, that's the problem with it right it's there. Awesome. They probably can't I see keep me repeating it pointing. until I actually am on camera to where you pointing. can see my finger come into the screen. As it is wont to do on okay. anyway. occasions. So. Uh, anyway, around, I'm going to say about halfway through the second season of the first series, it got really amazing, though. They really decided to start focusing on the story and developing the characters and especially the character of Prince Zuko got developed like crazy. Yeah. Um, and he started it, out as like a really serious rival dude. Well, no, he started out as this really pathetic loser well, that no one could take seriously. Yes. But he's trying to find the Avatar and make his name and He was trying to get his honor back, all that good stuff, blah, blah, blah. Typical anime anti-hero storyline. But anyway, um, well, anyway, get back to that later. Uh, and by the way, we have... Pepsis. No, I have, um, well, it's a Pepsi product, I suppose, but I have well, the Avengers Dr. Pepper can here. An Avenger, nice. Well, yes, and of course, Very this lovely. is Avengers Weekend. It's true. We haven't seen it yet, but we'll um, see it tomorrow. It's also Cinco de Mayo, which is right after May the 4th be with you. Yes, tomorrow will be Cinco de Seis, no, Seis de Mayo. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> yes, well. Five the sixth. <laughs> and also something about a moon and ocarinas. Yes, Go look it super up. moon. The super moon is this weekend. It will be in the sky. And then it's a place for moons. Three days later, it'll crash down to earth. and No. Be dead. So, He's making anyway. that up. He's... <laughs> At any rate, but in the third season especially, getting back on topic. Yes. The original <laughs> there's <a> topic. series. <laughs> there's a topic. We didn't know that. Anyway. Um, third series, it got really amazing, and yes. especially the finale, the final four episodes. And see, what he suggested that we do is watch the last, did we watch the last two episodes? Yes. Last four. Oh, we there, did? There we watched all of the last four? Yeah, it was a two-hour movie, quote-unquote, with four episodes back-to-back. -back. Okay, well, anyway, we did that so we would get synced. <laughs> Speaking of sync, yeah, because he, yay, he and my mom had not <laughs> actually there. <laughs> had not actually seen the whole series all the way through. They had seen bits and pieces, so I told them to watch yeah. the finale. I pretty much saw the very beginning and the very end, more or less. I mean, you saw bits and pieces. Like you might have saw a few episodes. Might have yeah, saw. yes, you saw the day of Black Sun. I remember that. Yes, but it's I have seen. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just one of those English things, you know what I'm saying? I'm a bigger spelling Nazi than grammar Nazi. Anyway. Yes. Um, And I still completely mess up my spelling, too. Anyway. Uh, so, okay. all that to say. Yes. I was really going into Korra, kind of expecting... More of like, the same? I was worried that they were going back to the kiddish thing yes but i was really hopeful that they were going to continue the really epic story yes. stuff and i feel like they did completely it was amazing heavy on the epic now here's i really i was i didn't know what to expect and it was kind of like yeah, we'll see epic well here's the thing i felt like that for the first three episodes that it was just completely epic Yes. This fourth episode we just saw. Just saw today. Kind of went back to that kiddish root again, I felt like. Yeah. I didn't... They're, they're, they're treading a fine line because they got to yeah. appeal to... But I mean, come on, that scene with Bo Lin running off crying, come on. Yes, well... That was just so overdone. That was kind of sad, it actually. It was pathetic. Well... Although Pabu was quite fun. Yes, washing a fire ferret is apparently very difficult. Like a cat. Something akin to washing a cat. Yeah, you don't actually, wash cats. you don't wash cats. You just leave them alone and they wash themselves. Exactly. But, um, I don't know. I, I feel like that was probably just 
like the one scene, but it really stuck with me and made me think, uh, 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 let's make as many funny faces as we can. Well, that and, and the sound effects make it <laughs> exactly. worthwhile. Um, it however, other than that, the episode wasn't really that bad. It did a lot to develop the characters and stuff. So I didn't hate the episode. I just felt like it wasn't as good as the first three, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. Although, I still enjoyed it, and it still brought out a lot of things that I think were worthwhile. Now, Which, by the way, you yes, have a what? Megas shirt on. Oh, yes, that. Yes, the Megas. Yes. They are the band that does music based on Mega Man. Can you play a clip of that? or would I'll play it on? right here. I'm the built by Dr. Yeah, that's good. You're bouncing well. <laughs> there you go. So just a little, little bit. Give you an idea of what it's like. I love the Megas. They're amazing. I actually bought he this shirt. He listens to them all the time. <laughs> yes. But I actually bought this shirt with I my own I know all the songs by heart now. I totally do. Except for a few of, of them. Of course you do. Anyway. Uh, where was we saying? Where was you saying? You oh, was yeah. saying. No, we. Us. Where was we saying? <laughs> we would like to play. Actually, he does very well with English. You know, it's it's like a it's first an internet language thing. for him. It's an internet <laughs> thing. When I'm on the internet, I have to talk stupid. It's a rule. Dare to be stupid, apparently. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> just just yeah, like yeah. Weird Al says. Yeah, it's, it's a thing. Anyway. It's a thing, yes. Um, right. So, what so, were we talking about? We were talking about the fact that this episode of Korra was eh. Right, okay. right. I was going to ask. But not bad. Right. Should we get into some of our theories, or do we want to avoid potential spoilers? Oh, well, spoilers. You just put up a giant spoiler warning yeah, spoiler right alert, now. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! <laughs> <laughs> Lovely and sound effects. Yes, I excel in sound effects. Oh, yes, I know. Indeed. Indeed. I was mm. do an old man voice that I quite like. Anyway... <laughs> nice yes so anyway yes you may spoil away okay so <laughs> the main villain of the series not that he spoiled mind you he actually is not spoiled at all well maybe a little little maybe a little little bit tiny bit anyway um as you drink your cola uh the main villain is Amon I do that when I'm off camera you see exactly uh <clears throat> Amon which you know, you notice it sounds like anon, like anonymous. Anon, ah, yes, ah, he, ah. he wears a mask. Ooh. What? There's like, uh, you know, hacker dudes called anonymous that are like totally evil. Well, some people think they're evil. Some people think they're not. They're anti-hero types. Ah, uh -huh, yes. And, and so it, there, there may be a, a bit of a nod toward that direction, but we will speculate on that. That doesn't really matter. The point is, the point he wears is, a mask. Yes. And mask is Yes. What? Yes. Yes, good. Uh, so I was theorizing as to who he might actually be, because I figured, excuse me, if he's wearing a mask, he ought to be someone we would, if not recognize, then know something about. Who is that masked man? Exactly. Um, there's no Squanto, though, or whatever his name was. Was that uh, his name? Yes, no. The masked man was the Lone Ranger, and it was Tonto. 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 Yes, Squanto is a female Indian name. Are you sure? Of, I think that's right, of which I, I am no not idea. aware at all that I know anything about. So I'll quit right while I'm behind. Awesome. Anyway, uh, so Aman wears a mask. I figured he had to be someone important. At that point in the series, first two episodes, we'd only really heard of a few characters in this new universe because it's 70 years after Aang died. No, sorry. That's completely wrong. 70 years after the war ended. And they have jalopies. And, what? Mo and motorcycles. Oh, yes, yes. And steampunk. it's like the 30s, and it's steampunkish. With radios and all that good stuff. Anyway. Yes. Those, like, really dorky, With like, the, yes, arch big, radios. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, I'm on, I figure, or figured, I'm not so sure anymore, but I figured <laughs> he was going to be one of Aang's three children. Because he's got three. I'm going along with that because I think there's going to be this big, you know... <sighs> conflict between obviously the bad guy obviously, obviously and he'll be hearkening back to you know my father was the avatar and now you're the avatar but you're not as cool as my father was and so forth and well see that's what i thought I originally your father kind of that's what yes. I, wait no no I, that's not entirely <laughs> right at all what <laughs> threw that in is completely random 
you, you know how I do. I do random things. We know. I wasn't saying that he was Cora's father. Oh, well, that would be interesting. However, we've actually met her father. But so, no. Not likely. Anyway, uh, I, I was figuring it was going to be, because I looked it up on the Avatar wiki. Yeah. Aang had three children, two sons, Avatars one daughter. Avatars wikis, yes. Yes, they do. The daughter is a waterbender. Uh-huh. Tenzin, of course, is an airbender. He's training Korra. Right. The other one isn't a bender. His name is Boomy. So I figured anti-bender allegiance. Yeah. Son of the Avatar, maybe. However. And his name is what? Boomy. Boomy. He's named after the guy from the first series, the old man that was crazy. Oh. Yeah. I like crazy old man. Yeah, he was fun. <laughs> uh, is he the guy that wanted to have the noodle shop? Noodle? What? No. no that's a whole other movie, isn't it? Never mind. <laughs> what you what was it? No, tea. He wanted to have a tea shop. No, that was Iroh. He Iroh wasn't crazy. He wanted to have a tea shop. He wasn't crazy. Well, I'm talking was, the actual crazy one. He was odd. A little bit odd, but this guy odd. was actually straight up crazy. Oh, okay. This was the guy that was like, remember the scene where he's like, someone important is missing from your group. Where's Momo? Right, right. Remember that? Over the top crazy. Exactly. Yes. Anyway, so I figured it was going to be Boomy. Not that Boomy, the other Boomy. The new Boomy. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm with you. Yes. I don't know how, but I'm with you. However, recently I've started to doubt that. And recently it's come to my attention that it could be one of the council members. <laughs> Even though they're all benders. Could still be. Well, it's possible that the even the bender types may be looking for power among the non-benders by getting rid of the benders. Right, and plus... Not sure about that idea. Plus, you kind of have to be a bender to learn the technique that Amon learns. We said spoiler warning, so I'll just say it. He learns to take away someone's bending, which yes. Aang did at the end of the first series. Permanently. Permanently, yeah. Permanently, like gold kryptonite. Permanently, okay, and you know it's 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 a it's a thing. Anyway, and uh, they also, of course, have uh, chi blocking, but yeah. that's temporary. But that's so we're talking different than that. That's been around forever. Well, yes, that was in the first series. Okay. For that matter, so was energy bending, but never mind. Um, only in the very last episode. So we're coming count. up on about fifteen minutes here, so okay. Well, we'll move it along. That's my theory. For those of you who were skipped past the spoiler warning, this is where you come back. Right here. Okay, we're back pop um <laughs> like they're gonna do that i know <laughs> anyway so are we gonna like actually rate it like with numbers or are we just sure, gonna say we it. loved it i mean i'm all for rating things you know as okay. long as they're as long as we're kind <laughs> ah, everyone gets zeros no help. um so storyline start with that what do you think of that um i'm out of five i'm I'm pretty much totally impressed with the storyline. I was prepared for it to be much sillier, Ow. much less cool. And so in terms of storyline and epicness, I'm going to give it a five because I'm being very generous. And <laughs> not only that, but I really do think it's good. Yeah, I'm I'm going to go along with that. I'm tempted to give it a 4.5, but yeah. just because... I thought about four, but... I don't know. It doesn't... I can't think of any specific points that I would change, per se. Mm-hmm. But... At the same time, it doesn't really feel like it's perfect, you know? I don't know. Yeah. It's... Uh, so, 4.5, 5, somewhere in there. It was really good. Really good story. Um, art style, art direction. Okay, on the art side, I'm going to say... I'm going to say 4. Okay. I'm trying to be less kind here. But <laughs> I do like it. I mean... Uh, you know, uh, the Totally Rad Dudes, uh, totally by the way. Totally Rad, show Totally Rad. Anyway. Totally Rad, Totally Rad. Plug anyway, here. The Totally Rad Dudes, uh, Jeff Kanata said, I think it was Jeff Kanata, said, was it okay for him to say she looks hot? <laughs> uh, I mean, she's a cartoon, okay? Yeah. I've got to really go too far there. But she is quite cute. And the cuteness. That's a good word, actually. Well, yeah, actually. That really is. Uh, the cuteness uh, goes along with the show rather well. Particularly since yes. they're doing kind of a love interest thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. Well. It, it, it's a bit yeah. early in the series to be getting that into that whole side of things. Well, I, don't know. I think that's where, they're, that's where they wanted to head because. Well, it also kind of feels like they're just doing that because the main character is a girl. You know? Well. Yeah, but I, I think that's where they wanted to go. I think they yeah. wanted to update it and make it for older kids. Well, they did have the whole. Right 
well, you know, the saying. whole Aang and Katara thing going on in the first series, but that was always just kind of in the background, and I liked that because it yeah, wasn't in was your like, face. What, nine? No, he was like, I want to say thirteen. Okay, well, he's still well, quite young, but still, still. kind of young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Korra is what? Do they say seventeen? She is seventeen. Which and is much more reasonable. But that is a somewhat more reasonable age, although as a dad, <laughs> if she was my daughter, then I'd say no, you can't do that. Yes, well of course she would. Anyway. Yes. Where was I going with that? Art style. Yes. Um keep in mind I watch anime. Indeed. And this is a very anime ish art style. True. So I'm like six out of five, no. But five wow. out of five, totally. I love it. It's Impressive. it's beautiful stuff because they give those little nods, like the you know the whole face fall sweat drop thing. They give yeah, those little nods to anime I'm, culture, but it's not, not over the top. Too, but, mm. it's not over the top though. That's true. It's that's true. It's very low key. I love it. Um, it's very low key. Low key. Uh-huh. Get it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> he has yes. an army. Well, anyway, what? What? So next is sound direction. Yes. That means voices and music and sound effects. Uh, voices are good. Uh, music, I think, is quite good. And uh, I like polar bear dogs. I'm not sure what that has to do with sound, but okay. <laughs> it's um, random. <laughs> I see. The music, to me, is much less memorable than the music from the original series. That I will give you. It yeah. is... It is background music more than it's like epic music. Right. It's not the kind of thing you're going to listen to off, off the show or outside the show. Right. Uh, yeah. Really exactly. To say you know. However, she hasn't gone Avatar state yet. I'm expecting something epic. Epic. I'm expecting something epic for the Avatar state. The tongue thing is apparently inherited. I did not know that. I think it's actually like an internet thing again. When you go on camera, your tongue just does not cooperate at all, ever. Interesting theory there. At any rate, um, I'm going to give the sound... I'm going to be a bit mean. I'm going to give it a three. Hmm. Because okay. it's, it's good overall. Three, of course, on this scale would be average. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. It's good, but it's not great. I feel like. Okay. Um, I think I'm out of many categories. So overall rating. Yes. You first. What say you? You first. He's wanting me to go first. Yes, I am. Um, I'm going to go with a 4.5. Out of, out of 10, sorry. Oh, out of 10. Overall We're is out of 10. changing the scale now. Yeah, I always do that. You uh, know that. okay. Then in that case, I'm going to say a solid 9. Solid 9. Yes. I can go with that, actually. I was going to say nine, yeah. Wow, we Cause, agree. Because there are a few pitfalls here and there that make it less they're still, awesome. They're still but learning. They're still getting their, their sea legs, so <laughs> Yes, to exactly. But overall, oh, and one more thing um, that I forgot to mention, the pro-bending. Yes. Yes. Pro-bending is the one thing the Totally Rad Dude said, eh. Really? Um, they thought that, they, they liked the idea of the pro-bending, but they just thought... That it sh- they should do more with the rules because they thought, and get this, they thought it might be fun to, for people to actually try to do pro bending games. That would actually be really fun if you could figure out some way to simulate bending. Uh, you, you can't bend, so well, how are you going to do that? The way I'm talking like Quidditch. The way I'm, the, yeah. The people who play, actually play Quidditch. The way I'm picturing it. fly around on blo- brooms. Bloomsticks. Blooms. Bloomsticks. Blooms. <laughs> um... The way I'm picturing it, though, is you take, like, a blue streamer for the water and, like, whip people with it. You, like, throw foam rocks. (laughs) I made him laugh with a drink in his mouth. That's pretty good. With Pepsi in my mouth, he makes me laugh. Oh, yes. And about spew it all over the camera. (laughs) It was only the fact that the cameras are awesome (laughs) that I swallowed it and go, it, (coughs) Nice. I don't know what you'd do for fire, though. No idea. Red streamers, <laughs> I guess. That's Flame what they throwers. They did that in the original Avatar series. They had non-benders like using streamers to be fire bending, like in like uh, festivals and How stuff. Very artsy. Exactly. Anyway, it's supposed to be like Chinese culture, sort of like yes. nod to that. Anyway. Yeah, that's true. Um, because you know they, they would have like paper dragons running around and and stuff like. Anyway. So anyway, you're kind of um, the, 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 the pro uh, bending. Yes. Pro bending. I thought that I was really worried about it first of all because mm-hmm. first of all i saw a screenshot online and i was like 
those outfits are really dorky. <laughs> but um, second of all, I was worried about the very concept of introducing a pro sport into Avatar and making that a central plot point. I'm like, it doesn't seem like a good idea. Well, yes, but... Yeah, but still... It, they it, pulled it, it out. They did. Well, and it gives them something that they can be a team around and right. bring out Because they're not traveling. They're not so traveling forth. in this series, so they can't have that whole That's dynamic. True. But um, what I really felt was that the rules, completely opposite of what the rag guy said, were, were very well defined. I mean, they don't come out and, like, explain them to you, but they show you. And it all makes sense. I actually think they did a better job with this last episode we saw. True, this episode of, was more of focused. what the rules were. This episode was much more focused on the pro bending than the previous ones. Yeah. But I felt like they did a really great job of really thinking it through rather than just saying, uh, okay, go bend at each other. Have fun. <laughs> you know? Yeah. True. I also think it's really interesting how they have all three elements available on the stage for them to use. Like, they have the earth blocks that they could throw and the water beneath the stage. Yeah, the water is in, Very like, clever. Uh, canisters or whatever you call it. No, it's it, like so a um, gutter sort of thing. And, yeah, I like the idea that, that when you f push them far enough back, they actually get thrown into the drink. Exactly, yeah, into the water. Yeah. Very nice. Indeed. So that's my thoughts. Okay. I've well, run out of thoughts. <laughs> There's running, no more thoughts in my Well, head. we're also running out of time. I Which is convenient. Make so, it another yeah. two-hour show. Yeah, what a happened to that? Two-hour anyway, that... show. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yay. Yes. So, we'll stop here, and we'll, as For I said now. earlier, earlier, the doctor is out of here. And me too. And the gay man. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.